and Dr Dodds. Hello Dr Dodds. Hello. May I call you Jean? Please do. Okay. Hello Jean. Um, today we are in Venice and it's a beautiful day again and we're going to talk about the thyroid. Hmm. Hyperthyroidism. I came to your seminar um, that you did in Stoneleigh um, about oh, a few weeks ago now and at the Kennel Club headquarters. Something that stuck with me is when you talked about the thyroid and, and dogs. Anyway, I had um, a lady the other day said to me, her dog has become really snappy. Just out of the blue, she goes to stroke her dog, bites her, and it's done it quite a few times, and the vet has put, the, the conventional vet has put the dog on a kind of light sedative. And I said, could you show me some photographs? So she just given me some photographs, and anyway, I've noticed in the photographs that the eyes are starting to squint a bit and that there is a frown, very, very deep frown line and the dog looks, I'd just say it looks grumpy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I thought, aha, I remember you saying that to, this could be a sign of hyperthyroidism. Correct. So she's gone, we don't know the results yet, so I'm waiting to hear, but she has gone off to be tested. Is this something you would say is a classic sign, this snappiness, all of a sudden starting to bite you? The animal can do anything. Remember, the thyroid is a major master gland. Where is the thyroid? The thyroid exactly? is in your neck. It's a butterfly-like organ right here. Okay, here. So if you put a very tight collar or a prong collar on your dog mm -hmm. who's pulling all the time, you're constantly damaging the thyroid gland mm -hmm. and also the salivary glands on either side. So you can have a lot of thyroid injury and inflammation just from the use of a collar. So we recommend a harness instead. Yeah. Because young animals tend to pull. Okay? Yeah. Well, they're learning. So, and, yeah. so the thyroid gland is a major master gland and when it goes awry, you don't see the classical signs that we're taught as veterinarians to look for. What are you taught as a classic sign? Fat, lazy, hates the cold, has bad skin and no hair. No, that's what we're taught, but that's not what you see. Okay. Fat, lazy, hates the cold, yeah. has bad skin and hair coat. Right. That doesn't occur until 70% of the thyroid gland has already been gone, damaged. Okay. And that's what you late, see then. instead is idiopathic obesity, animals that gain weight even though they don't eat more, mm -hmm. and behavioral problems, which is what you're talking about. Yeah, okay. So it is what we taught about. We're, we're taught to wait. Mm -hmm. You wait with a ticking time bomb for a year or a year and a half until the animal's fat, lazy, hates the cold, etc. Yeah. Meanwhile, they're having behavioral problems. They're snapping. They can suddenly become phobic. Oh, I go by the laundry room and I see a white towel and I start screaming. Yeah. I'm, I'm hysterical. I yeah. hate the thunder. Yeah, this is sort of classic thing yeah. that people say. Before. I'm going yeah. to be obsessive compulsive. I'm taking the baby's toy. Yeah. They have this mania is about Is this sort them. of a, a behavior that just comes out like Just a comes suddenly in an okay. adult animal. Yeah. Or um, they can be submissive. Mm -hmm. They come up to you instead of wagging their tail, they roll over and pee. Yeah. And they're a, they're a dog that's a working dog, like a Doberman. Yeah. I mean, you don't you want do that. that. No, no. But the worst one is the behavior. Mm -hmm. You come home, you're, the animal's happy to see you normally, you open the door, you walk in the door, and the animal's right at your throat. Mm. Oh, my God. And then when you look at them and you take pictures like you did, the eyes look funny, the brow looks furrowed, they yeah. can have a deep cleft above the um, bony part, above the yeah, eyes. Yeah, this is what I saw. Yes, yeah, almost and like, yeah. I think I showed a slide where there was a golden retriever at diff three different yes, times yes. when you could see the age. Yeah. So the fact that we have these cameras now that allow us to take videos or pictures, mm -hmm. when people go to their veterinarian to show them that the animal's not the way he or she was, they should take the pictures to show them, even if they're lame. Because when you're in the veterinary office in a small exam room, the animal's lameness cannot be seen easily. So this is quite interesting, actually, what you're saying. So when we, when we buy a puppy and we have a well pet... Take we, pictures. Yeah, so we take pictures, we take video, 
Um, and, you know, like you were saying with the Nutri-Scan as well, to do the scan, to do the test via the PET as well. Right. So it's almost like an insurance to say, well, this is right. how, a model, this is how you were, right. and this is not right. Right. So that's how we know there's something Right, wrong. and you do laboratory testing, whatever, and then you follow that animal as you go along. Yeah. And so if the animal's lame, for example, and you see it's not walking properly, you go to the veterinarian with, this is what the dog was doing six months ago. I just took a video now running down our front walk and look mm -hmm. and suddenly now the veterinary knows I know where I have to look mm. you know in the shoulder or the hip or wherever mm. yeah so when a dog is hypothyroid or hyperthyroid should be hypo all right so hypothyroid so their thyroid is just not working properly or it's always damaged it's usually damaged okay. and it can be actually destroyed and the thyroid gland doesn't regenerate it's not like the liver so once okay. it's gone, it's gone, and those cells will never be replaced. So as a holistic vet's point of view, what can you do? You can only support what's You can there? support the thyroid, but you can't replace what's been damaged. But it's never going to come back. Right. So as a holistic veterinarian myself, yeah. I would say, sure, support holistic it. Do whatever you can to support yeah. it. Yeah. But you can't replace what's gone. You have to do that by some other yeah. means, either with a natural thyroid extract or a synthetic thyroid yeah. extract. Yeah. Um, okay, so the other thing I wanted to ask about the thyroid in, in, in dogs... I remember you saying something about if you feed, um, say, the trachea, trachea. Mm -hmm. of, a, an, a, of, of a cow or something, and you have to make sure it hasn't got the thyroid attached to it, because right. if your dog eats it, it can affect it's gonna it. going to get thyroid hormone. Same thing with raw, raw red meat. If the raw red meat has the throat or gullet in it, okay. they're going to get thyroid hormone from that. And they've even shown in a recent publication from mm -hmm. Canada that the juices squeezed out of raw red meat that, can, that include this part of the, of the neck have thyroid hormone activity in them. Goodness me. So those dogs can be hyperthyroid. Right. Not because they were given medicine at too high a dose, yeah. but because they were eating it yeah. with raw meat or the trachea or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So that's something to watch and to look out for. Right. Mm -hmm. What about the, um, I know it's quite common at the moment to have like a dried, dehydrated sort of trachea. Would, would that still have a problem? should be okay. Most of the people that are familiar with this mm. issue now will state somewhere on the thing that, that there is no glandular tissue in mm. this product. Yeah. Meaning that they've stripped it completely off before yeah. they dehydrated it. Okay. And the other thing I want to ask you about, about it as well is, could anything affect it when you have the test done so if the dog was in season or if the if, if they're if they on, on medication. medication absolutely yeah that's the problem with the whole thing is veterinarians are taught to do just a total t4 which is basically useless because yes. drugs and and illnesses and everything affect that so you don't know what the th so normally true thyroid if your vet thinks that your your pet has a, a thyroid, thyroid issue, problem they'll mm -hmm. do a, a standard what's called a t4 right and you suggest doing useless it's absolutely useless. That's what I learned by from itself. when you did. Yeah, exactly. Correct. You need a complete profile. And yes, it's going to cost more money, but you've got to rule it in or rule it out up front. So once you've got the answers, so what could affect the test? So um, your ordinary vet might not know. So if the dog was in season, that would affect yes. it. Yes. If, if, if it's it just been male... vaccinated, if it's on steroids, um, yeah. if it's on anticonvulsants like phenobarbital, if it takes sulfonamide yeah. antibiotics, which yeah. we wouldn't want to give to anybody, no. um, those kinds of things will affect it for Anything sure. Anything environmental, can that affect the test as well? Well, you don't know. It's suppressing don't know. it. Of course it could. So yeah. the, uh, what I wanted to know And the well, diet. And the no, diet, glutens, absolutely. Yeah, of course. Our yeah. glutens again. <laughs> yeah, well, they keep coming up, don't they? Yeah. Um, the other thing I wanted to really go into as well is if, you're, if your pet has a thyroid issue and your vet says this T4 is the way to go and I'm only going to do this, what else can they do? Can they send insist that the blood work is sent they out They can say else? I'm not comfortable with just the diagnosis based on a total T4 because I've been reading a lot about this on the mm -hmm. internet and with all due respect, Dr. Mm -hmm. Smith or whatever, yeah. I want to do a more complete thyroid profile. Right. And if you don't have that option available to you, I'd like to send it to Hemopet in California yeah. or Michigan so State we can or ask for the vet absolutely. To take the bloods absolutely and send, and send to it you. or even in Wherever. one of the laboratories in the UK yeah. where they do a more complete yeah. thyroid profile. Yeah. And then once it's done, remember that we at Hemopet are the only laboratory that interprets results based on the age and the breed type of the dog. Remember, right? Okay. Newfoundlands don't have the energy of a of a no, Yorkshire of a Terrier or a Chihuahua. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and sighthounds are different. 
and yeah. young dogs are growing and their thyroids are higher than mm -hmm. old dogs. Mm -hmm. So it isn't just the normal reference range for all breeds of all ages. It has to be age and breed specific. So what people can do, whether they do the testing with us mm -hmm. or to have a proper test done elsewhere, mm -hmm. they can send us the results for evaluation based on the breed and the history and the age of the dog. And then so we even do, if the we vet, provide that. the vet didn't know how to read the results or had never done the yeah, test We can help. Before. Now, can help. you know, so I can't... you're not can't... left out on your own. There's help there. Right. Yeah. And I'm not prescribing anything now yeah. because I haven't seen the animal. I can mm -hmm. only make suggestions. Yeah. Because yeah, <laughs> I'm not practicing on that particular pet. Yeah. It's illegal to do that, yeah. by the way. But it's but you can make that suggestion. Absolutely. Well. So they're not really stuck. So if you go to your vet and they suspect some sort of, you suspect some sort of thyroid issue, you, you insist that you don't want a T4. That's what I would do, mm -hmm. that personally. And you would ask for, sorry, could you just... A complete thyroid antibody profile. A complete thyroid, thyroid antibody. Antibody. Profile. profile. And if you live in a country where the veterinarian doesn't know, there's a possibility that we know other veterinarians nearby that can help. So we can make a contact with Correct. Yeah. And, and we had people that came to Stone Lee from Holland yes. that recently went to see my holistic colleague outside of Amsterdam. And they were ecstatic because right. both of their dogs have been are going to be tested by her and she sends all her stuff to Hemopet. So I said, you've got to make the trip. It was about 35 minutes for them, that's all. But they didn't know she was there. Yeah. And she's outstanding. So, so you know, so that was is, a good referral. Yeah, exactly. So you've got the situation where you've got a pet. So you're, the, the ordinary vet, maybe, is told something else. So And by the time the dog has become fat, lazy, doesn't like the cold. It's too so late. It's too late. So yeah. 70%. I mean, it's saying, not too late, but it's but much it's, later than it should have been. Yeah. So if, we, if we've got a young, young dog, we start taking videos, start taking photographs. Right. And looking at the dog. So you so once a year to update those photographs, look at the dog's Correct. face and everything. And if we get all of a sudden very odd, out the blue behavior, just like this do lady said, she said, oh, I, it wasn't a question of I couldn't move him. It was a question of coming in the room and stroking him and he was biting her. Yeah. And she would walk he didn't past feel him. well. Yeah, he's expressing himself. And this is not really the right thing to do to and, put them on a Well, they don't know. A it's a child, it? child do, children do that. Mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. want to get attention. Well, that's the worst thing to do because they yeah. sometimes are punished for that. Yeah. All they're trying to do is please pay attention yeah. to me. I need help. Yeah, you and know? there is help available. Right. Okay, so that's really good. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome.